The Stanley Cup playoffs are finally here, and the Dallas Stars are a part of it, and they will be taking on the Calgary Flames in the first round. And on today's episode, I'll be joined by Jess Belmosto of Locked On Flames to talk all about this first round matchup, the big storylines for the Flames, the big storylines for the Stars, and the biggest matchups to be on the lookout for. Some The series contains a top-line matchup that is unlike any other. We'll talk about it all on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Monday, May 2nd. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcasting platform and leave a rating or review if you like what you hear. You can also find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis and our show at Locked on Stars. And this is a great time of year in the world of sports. The Stanley Cup playoffs start tonight. The Dallas Stars won't play until Tuesday. But we have some great matchups tonight. The Lightning Maple Leaf series, uh, one of my favorite series to be on the lookout for besides Stars Flames. Uh, I think that has a lot of potential to be a very entertaining series. But enough about that. Let's jump into today's crossover episode between Locked on Stars and Locked on Flames. Welcome in, hockey fans. This is Dane Lewis of the Locked on Stars podcast, joined by Jess Belmasto of the Locked on Calgary Flames podcast here to talk about this first-round matchup in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And Jess, the the Flames, no pun intended, are are riding red hot into this postseason. How does that make you feel at this moment? I am so happy and so proud of them because this was just an under an underdog team. They severely underperformed last year, but for them to come into this season and just dominate through the entire year uh, and overachieve, in my opinion, has been really nice to watch and um, fun to cover as well. Yeah, I I think dominates the the big word there. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people going into the season, myself included, just looked at this specific division and thought, Okay, Calgary will probably be in the top three. I mean, because they have a lot of talent, but then you have Edmonton in there uh, with two, you know, all time generation talents on that team. And then, of course, Vegas, who really ever since they've come into the league have (laughs) made the playoffs and been a really good team. And it started out the year they were at the top and uh, around the all star break is when things started to turn. So what in your eyes was kind of the what, what made that change for this Flames team to not only surpass the Golden Knights, but really just surpass everyone in that division by a mile? You know, I think that they finally had a good attitude in the room and they had a coach that uh, was qualified. I think that they they knew that this wasn't just like a, okay, like we're just going to float down here in like the wild card spot. Like, and that's that's not going to be tolerated. You have to be succeeding. And Daryl Sutter is a coach who, you know, will pull guys from their usual line and say, okay, you haven't been doing much up here. So we're going to switch things up a little bit, but I think they're just a very disciplined team and they had this kind of all or nothing mentality. And finally the skill uh, and stamina to back it up. Yeah. And you talk about skill and stamina and some of the guys leading this team as far as players go. And uh, I mean, we'd be remiss to not talk about the season that Johnny Gaudreau had and I mean, that top line was just fantastic. And I think the top line matchup is going to be one of my favorite parts of this series mm-hmm. that I'm sure we'll get to talk about a little bit later. But were you expecting a, a 115 point season from Gaudreau or uh, were you expecting a little bit lower? I mean, is this about what you expected going into this season? I did not expect it. Um, you know, I think 
I was hoping for him to be in like the 80 to 90 point range. I don't, I don't think that I'm like underselling him there. I just think that he, there were a lot of questions surrounding him in terms of how would he adjust to Daryl Sutter's system and, you know, him being bumped up to the top line was just the biggest blessing for him and this team this year, uh, not having to play in a line with Sean Monahan, who um, just has all these injuries all the time and slows the line down was truly beneficial to him and the team as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I know he's been a, even playing the stars, I mean, a fun guy to watch, but also a guy that you're like, ah, I mean, he could go for, for two or three goals on any given night. And yeah. I mean, as could Kachuk Lindholm, I mean, uh, there's so many talented players and uh, even going back to kind of the trade deadline time, I know Calgary, um, unless you count the, the Jack Eichel trade way back early in the season, <laughs> kind of broke the ice first of the, the trade market by getting Tyler to Foley. And I remember that being the biggest trade and you know, I, I can't remember if the Flames made too many other big trades um, just because all that has, it feels like forever ago. And, you know, the teams have just, you know, sometimes teams change and you, you miss it, but how has the trade deadline impacted this team? And do you think that that is kind of part of the reason that Calgary finished the season that the way they did, um, or do you think that they would have finished this way maybe without some of those pieces? You know, I think it goes back even further uh, than the trade deadline. It goes back to free agency with them bringing in Blake Coleman and, bringing in a guy who knows what it takes to win and is coming off of uh, two, you know, back-to-back Stanley cup championships. And he's like the shiny new toy in the locker room. And then they bring in Tyler to at the deadline. And it's like, okay, like we're, we're bringing in players with playoff experience who know how to lead, who knows, who know what it takes. And um, just being able to build a roster that is deep And, you know, you can count on every single line and even the defensive pairings for, uh, you know, offensive production is just something that this team has really benefited from. Yeah, uh, Blake Coleman, I think, was a really huge addition. I know there were a lot of people here in Dallas that wanted him on the stars after, you know, those cup runs with Tampa Bay because he's a a DFW native. And so it would have been cool to see him come home. But he seems to have, you know, found his spot in Calgary and has fit in really well with that team. And I mean, 33 points definitely isn't bad given the the role he's been asked to play. I mean, the the stars we all know have been uh been itching for some secondary scoring all year long. And uh, but good to see, you know, Coleman move on from the Tampa Bay Lightning and seemingly pick up where he's left off, but with a division winner and uh potentially looking to to make a deep run and kind of shifting gears to I guess the more defensive side of the ice. Jacob Markstrom has been one of the better goalies uh in the NHL for most of this season, I think either was near the top or led the NHL in shutouts. Um, yeah, and he also, led the league with nine. Yeah, I, I know he and uh, Shesterkin both led the league in a lot of statistics and uh, a really good year from him all around. And I know the Stars have been, you know, the the beneficiary or the anti-beneficiary, I guess, <laughs> of some of his work. And even dating back to around the All-Star break, when I think people started to see the turn for Calgary at the, I think you guys had that comeback win in like the last three minutes over the yeah, Stars. and that's right. Yeah, that was a... Man, that was that was a tough time because I thought the stars were kind of turning around at that point, and then we just had to go into the All Star break for five, however many days that was, four or five days, thinking about that loss. But Markstrom, a, a big part of that game and just a big part of this Flames season. Uh, how important is he to this team? I mean, you talk about the offense, but I mean, any great team is well rounded on offense, and then they also have good defense and great goaltending. So, how important has he been to this team this season? He has been one just the difference maker. He really has been. This Flames team had not had stable goaltending in a very long time until he came in last season. And my favorite thing about him is that he turned down more money from Edmonton because he wanted to play in Calgary instead. But he has just been out there and he has this, again, the all or nothing mentality where it's like, If you're happy with losing like two to one, you got to, no, you know, got to give us more. You need to do better. But he has had some incredible saves this season where I just, I feel like it's a cheat code or something because (laughs) he'll have like his blockers, like doing all sorts of crazy things. He'll spread himself out. And I'm just like, I don't know how that's physically possible, but he 
his ability to track the puck is something that I'm, I've been very impressed by. There's only been, I think, two games in the last two seasons where I have really scratched my head and wondered what was going on. There was one game against Boston, I know for sure, um, back in d- November or December, where I was just like, what are you doing? There was no excuse other than the track, uh, the inability to track the puck, but he has been just a brick wall for this team and someone who has, he has it figured out, whatever it is, he is just completely locked in and has been since training camp. Yeah, that's such a huge piece for this Calgary team. And I know that I I imagine, I mean, the team and the entire fan base is behind him just because, you know, he chose to stay in Calgary over Edmonton. I know that's a pretty big deal. Uh, And so I imagine that that's probably spurred a part of his performance this season. I mean, having that that home crowd behind him every single home game and having uh, that team around him. I mean, that's just got to be fantastic to have. And he's having a good season as a result. But we're going to continue to talk about the Stars Flames first round matchup. The the first meeting between these teams in the postseason since 2020 back in the bubble up in uh, Alberta. But now they get to play in Calgary and in Dallas. But before we continue talking about this matchup, we want to say thank you to some of our sponsors on today's show, and one of those is Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, hockey playoffs, and the start of Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. So now it's your turn on the hot seat, I guess, if you want to call it that. (laughs) Uh, Like you mentioned before the break, this is the last time, or sorry, the bubble was the last time uh, that these two teams met in the postseason. And the Stars obviously made it to the Stanley Cup final. And one image that is just burned into my brain is Jamie Benn sitting in the locker room with his head in his hands and just so defeated and upset. How, how, How is this team different is it better than the bubble is it uh do they have like the kinks worked out what's what's the deal with the stars yeah that's a that's a great question and it's a very loaded question to say that they're better i i feel like if they are it's not by a whole lot but i don't think they're worse um i think that this is still a really good team and when, when they're at their best they can hang with just about anybody in the league i mean they had so many like huge wins that people didn't think they'd get. I mean, they split split season series with Tampa, with Florida. I, I know they they stole a game up in Calgary early in the year before dropping the other two. Uh, I mean, just so many you know wins that going into the season and at certain parts of the season it looked like we might not get because they lost two games to Ottawa, they lost a game to Montreal at home, two games to to Arizona, one in overtime that still actually sent the Stars to the playoffs, but still a game that you would think they'd win at home. Um, so yeah, this is a, a weird team and a team that's really been through a lot ever since that, that image of Jamie Ben just, uh, defeated, which I, I know for stars fans was just a, a tough pill to swallow. Um, because I mean, looking back at everything that team kind of went through in the bubble and what carried over into last season, I, I mean, this team has just been through so much adversity and I know so many other teams have as well with COVID and injuries. And even last season, there was like Two, a week and a half or almost two weeks where things were shut down in Dallas because of snowstorms. And so the stars couldn't play and they couldn't make up those games. And they ended up almost making the postseason last year, despite Tyler Sagan barely playing. Alexander Radulov was out most of the year. So th- this is a team that I-, I think was able to learn from that experience in the bubble. And I think that this is now a team that though they underperformed in the regular season at times, I think with the veteran leadership on the team, that this is a team that can, perform well in the playoffs and I think that they're built for the playoffs rather than regular season success if that makes sense definitely and you know it doesn't matter you know we talked about this before but it doesn't matter how many games it takes you to clinch a playoff spot it's about what you do after that and Mm -hmm. um 
I think that there are a few players on this team that know what it takes to get it done. And Tyler Sagan being one of them, he has had so many surgeries that I didn't even, uh, I, I don't know how he's playing hockey and recovering <laughs> from this because if I know nope, I'm all set with that, it was what, like a double hip and a quad or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. And I think there might've been something wrong with his knee at one point, or maybe I'm, that might've been Alexander Radulov. All the injuries start to, to run together. <laughs> um, How, has this year been for him considering I believe this was his first full season back after those surgeries? Yeah, it's been a, a pretty good year for him. All things considered, he played 81 games um, and, and, you know, early on in the year, I think he struggled a little bit and was kind of having to get reacclimated to the travel schedule and, you know, the, the full you know schedule that you play. Uh, Dallas started the year out with four games on the road and I think there was a little bit of a, a learning curve, I guess, there of having to get back to normal. But really, at the mid season, mid you know, mid part of the season around the All Star break, he really started to turn things around and uh, become a little bit more of a productive player on a consistent basis. Um, and I, I think also to his credit, he was getting—I don't know if he was necessarily getting moved around a lot on his line, but his line was getting changed up so much. I mean, Sagan, Ben, and Radulov were a, a staple, you know, line those three together for a long time, mm -hmm. but. Radulov starting to age a little bit. Jamie Benn starting to show a little bit of wear and tear. And so it would really be Sagan Benn. And then they'd try to plug somebody else in that line, whether it was Denis Gurionov or Marion Studenich after he got sent to Dallas from New Jersey. And so it, it's, I think, just been difficult for him to be as productive as he's been in the past. One, because of recovering from injuries, but also just the consistency of who he's on the ice with. Because he and Jamie Benn still have pretty good chemistry, but neither of them are the players that they once were, even though, you know, they're still contributors to this team and still, I think, good leaders of this team uh, in the locker room and in, in the way that they go about their business, even if they're not putting up the numbers that they once could. Definitely. And I think that's such, because I mean, Tyler Sagan came into this league young. I, they all do pretty much, but just, it's unbelievable that he's like 30 years old now. And that makes me feel old. And um, it's a very humbling experience there but a lot there are a lot of younger guys in the mix of things how do you think that the veteran leadership will play a part into helping them kind of overcome this the butterflies and just the jitters and everything yeah I, I think and you're right this is a kind of a weird team with age because you have guys like Joe Pavelski who's 37 years old and had a career high in points this year. And you have guys like Sagan and Ben, but you also have Miro Haskin and Rope Hintz, Jason Robertson, who have had little to no postseason experience. So I, I think it'll be big in the way that, I mean, just like you said, to, to calm down the butterflies, I think just getting to see how these veterans operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, I, I think even going into the postseason, there's probably not too much that changes because I know athletes in general are, are kind of creatures of habit in the way they prepare and the way that they get themselves ready for games and for playoff series. And mm -hmm. so I think a guy like Jason Robertson, who, you know, missed out, was a rookie last year and missed out on the playoffs. He's been playing on a line with Joe Pavelski all year and getting to watch how he does things. Um, and, if, you know, if he's not watching Joe, he's hanging out with Tyler or Jamie or John Klingberg and kind of seeing how they go about things. And so just having all those guys that have been there before and can say, hey, I've tried fill in the blank and it has or hasn't worked. Um, and, you know, and even just asking for advice of, hey, do you think, I should do this or you think I should try this out in the playoffs. I, I think that that just works wonders for this team. Um, and, and also, it, you know, if a, a younger guy kind of falls short or underperforms early on, those older guys are right there to pick him up and say, hey, that's OK, because you're young. This is early in your career. I mean, it, as great as it would be for you to play the same way you did in the regular season, that regular season and postseason just aren't the same. Uh, the pressure is a lot higher. There's a lot more intensity and a lot more physicality. So I don't expect all of our young guys to be perfect. I do expect them to come out and compete. But uh, I mean, just knowing how how younger players can be, I mean, how the, the Stanley Cup playoffs can be uh, pretty unforgiving at times. I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out and how these older guys kind of pick up these younger guys and take them under their wing. Can you tell us a little bit about the goaltending situation? Because... You know, unfortunately, Ben Bishop is no longer a star. Well, he's a star, but he's not a Dallas star. Right, right. roster. <laughs> um, but 
what has your goaltending situation looked like? And how do you think that will, uh, I guess, we'll elaborate on this more in a little bit, but just how does it compare to Calgary's goaltending with Jacob Markstrom? Yeah, this has almost just kind of become a, a, a like, for sure, you can lock it in a question that everyone asks about the Stars because it is such a perplexing ordeal, I guess, just because we started out the year with, like you said, Ben Bishop uh, was still injured but was expected to return to the lineup at some point. Um, and we had Braden Holtzby, who we got from Vancouver, and Anton Hudobin. Now Holtzby's on long-term IR, uh, and Hudobin had season-ending surgery. So Jake Ottinger has been brought up from the AHL early on in the year, a place that we thought he'd be for the majority of the season. Uh, and he's had to kind of step into that number one goalie role, but he has done exceptionally well. And I think far and away better than anyone in Dallas would have expected him. Um, he had to play a lot last season as well because of injuries. And he did, he did pretty well there. Um, but I mean, it just given the, you know, it was kind of like a, Oh, all things considered, he had a pretty good rookie year. Um, and so I think people were like, well, he's still really young. He's still probably not fully developed. So this could be a really tough challenge for him, but he took the challenge head on and uh, has put up some really solid numbers. Um, and then we go out and get Scott Wedgwood at the trade deadline from Arizona. And he's turned out to be kind of a, a diamond in the rough player as well. Um, I, a lot of people didn't really know what to expect because it's a guy that played for the Coyotes. And so the Coyotes <laughs> give up a lot of goals and their defense is it leaves a lot to be desired. So it was like, okay, this Wedgwood guy has made some good plays for the Coyotes, but how will that translate over to Dallas? But he he's come in and, he, and you know, if, if Ottinger, if something were to happen to him, I don't think anyone – in the organization for the stars or even in the fan base would have an issue with, with Wedgwood having to come in. Uh, he's a really talented guy and, and the few press conference interactions that I've seen him in. I mean, he speaks pretty humbly of himself to have, you know, he's put up some really monster performances, but still talks about how he and Jake like to work together and, and, and help one another improve. And Jake says a lot of the same things about Scott. And so I think that there's a genuine, like good friendship relationship that's being built there. And I think that's going to help the stars in the postseason because they have two guys that I think the coaching staff and the team is confident in on any given night. That that's good to hear. I think that, um, you know, obviously ha having that weird transitional period with goaltending is, is such an odd time in itself. But then when you make the postseason and it's just kind of like, Oh, all right, we have to like figure this out for ourselves now. But mm -hmm. I think that it'll be I I like Ottinger. I think he's a cool kid. <laughs> but uh coming up next, we are going to talk about, you know, these key matchups, players to watch, and all of that fun stuff that all of you love to a bet on and star players to watch but first we do need to say a special thanks to built bar for sponsoring today's uh second segment <laughs> Summer is coming and you know you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacations. Throw them in your bag, your kids' backpacks, your coolers, whatever it may be, and make sure everyone is fueled for summer adventures. The best part about Built Bars is that they're healthy and delicious, but they don't taste like they're healthy. <laughs> they certainly taste delicious, and they but they taste like a candy bar because they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and so are the Built Puffs. They are uh, crazy high in protein, and of course, uh, low in calories, low in carbs, low in sugar, and the Built Puffs are absolutely delicious. Uh, the churro flavors are just to die for, and they're only 140 calories. Built Bar makes sure there is something for everyone, and most bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and about 17 grams of protein. And when you compare that to a candy bar that you might throw in your cooler, it's, it's a little bit of a healthier option. So you can go to built.com today to get all of your favorites, banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, and so many more and they are all delicious and new flavors coming all the time. Check them out on built.com. Head on over to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your order at built.com.
All right, we're closing out this crossover episode between Locked On Stars and Locked On Calgary Flames. Thank you guys again for making both these shows your first listen of the day. And Jess, we're we're finally at the point where we can talk a little bit about these matchups. I know we've talked about the goalie matchup and a little bit of the, the top line matchup. And I, I think I kind of want to start there because I think yeah. it's such a perplexing matchup. Who who do you think? Uh, I mean, obviously, Gaudreau, Kachuk, Lindholm, and Pavelski, Robertson, Hints. I, I mean, how do you think that this top line for Calgary will match up against the Stars early on in this playoff series? And do you think they are the key to a, a deep run for this Flames team? Definitely. I think that the Flames are, uh, that top line in general has a really special chemistry. And um, obviously, putting they all made it to 40 goals this season. So something's clicking there for them, but I am a little bit, uh, I don't want to say worried because that that's not the right word, but I'm intrigued to see how they go up against, you know, Joe Pavelski's line. I think that that's, uh, you know, a daunting line, but just the flames. I, I don't know. That top line has the ability to get anything done when they want it to. And I would say that uh, as long as they don't make the same mistakes that they've made in the past in terms of the offense kind of fizzling out in the first round, then they'll, they'll be okay. They're, they'll definitely be a key part of this team. Yeah, I, I think it's just going to be so fun to watch. These are six of the best offensive talents mm-hmm. in the league. And uh, I think uh, even if they're not on the ice at the same time, I think that the defenders for each team respectively will will have their hands full and, and kind of keeping in the same vein of conversation. Who do you think are the the best defensemen or the best defensive pairing to match up against a star's top line or any other really talented top line in the NHL? Yeah, I you know, I think that Noah Hannafin and Rasmus Anderson have been very um, I hate when people say underrated, but they've been very undervalued and um you know whether that be because it's a western market team or whatever i think that they have just been very um productive this season in terms of you know blocking shots going out there and they've really elevated their defensive game this past season which is shocking to me because they anderson lost G, uh, mark giordano who was his mentor for his first few years in the league and it's kind of ironic I don't know if it's just a coincidence but as soon as Gio left Anderson was playing at a higher level and Noah Hannafin has definitely taken steps uh to be one of the top defensemen uh in the league or just climbing that ladder he's 24 years old but has came into the league very, very young at 18, 19 years old and has been just like a force to be reckoned with this season. Yeah, I think that's going to be incredibly fun to watch. And I I think on, you know, the stars end of things, you you can look a lot of ways as far as defensive pairings and the the defense side of things for the stars has been kind of odd this season. Miro Haskinen is back now and fully healthy, but had a a stint with mononucleosis earlier in the year. And John Klingberg has been on and off the ice at times. And I think the only defenseman that played all 82 games was actually Ryan Suter, uh, who draws a lot of criticism from Stars fans at times. But if we're, we're paying him the money that we are, I'm, I'm glad that he's at least out there for all the <laughs> games and taking no nights off. But I, I think uh, I, I don't know who he gets paired with just because the coaching staff changes it up all the time. But I think Miro Haskinen is probably the best bet to try to have out there with that Calgary line. Uh, he can skate with just about anybody in the league. And the work that he does with his stick uh, to poke the puck away and disrupt plays, I think, is a pretty undervalued part of his game if we're talking about things that are underappreciated or undervalued. Um, and so I'm excited to see how that matchup unfolds. And I, I think the goalie matchup is also a, a really exciting um, thing to look at because Markstrom is a guy that's been in the league for a lot longer than Jake Ottinger has because Ottinger's still relatively new. I think he technically still identified as a, a rookie Ottinger did or, or, or was at least close to meeting those qualifications. Um, so this is his first go about in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but how do you think Markstrom will hold up in the postseason? Because as we've said earlier in this show, regular season and postseason are, are two very different things. Yeah. You know, I think that um, Markstrom is someone who is just so 
I mean, all these guys are obviously hockey oriented, but he is someone who can just put the blinders on and say, this is what I need to do. I think that he has the ability and the talent to, you know, really rob what would be like, you know, sports center highlight goals from the stars. But I mean, we've seen it time and time again this season that he has let um, a few softies in and you're like, what, what is this? But my goal or my hope rather is that he isn't too stressed or tired because I believe he had 63 starts this season. Uh, Daryl Sutter just did not give him a break. And it was very obvious at some points that he was tired. And he, he does this thing when he's tired. He leaves the crease to play the puck. So, Stars fans, if you start seeing that, that's when you know the Flames are in a little bit of trouble. But, you know, he leaves the crease. He, he'll play the puck more. He It's usually when he's tired or has a nagging injury. And... I I think it'll be a great uh, matchup to watch because you have, you know, the young blood versus the seasoned vet. And um, obviously, you know, the Stars goalie can learn from Markstrom, even if he is at the other end of the ice. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that, that will be of value to Jake Ottinger. And that's assuming he gets the, the nod in game one. Uh, Stars fans will know if, if they've been listening to my show for most of the season that I'm just the worst at picking who's going to for predicting rather who's going to start in net for the stars for given games and but i just think ottinger being on this team from really the start of the season mm -hmm. uh, i i think I, I think that he would probably get the nod in game one and if he has a rough outing uh maybe you go scott wedgwood in game two where you use him you know later on in the series but i i am fairly confident in saying that jake ottinger will will probably see uh the, the crease for game one of, of this series but looking at this series as a whole i know we're, we're running the pretty heavy on time here but we got to give out some uh, some final predictions. How do you see this series shaping out as far as who wins and in how many games? I'm going to say Flames in six, just because I do think that Dallas will obviously end up winning a few games. And what will cost the Flames those games are unnecessary penalties, because that's what happened in the bubble. And I do not have faith in them. <laughs> what about yeah. you? What do you what are you thinking? Yeah, this is a, a tough series to predict because there's the, the the side of me that wants to be realistic and say, OK, this is a, a Calgary team that has bested Dallas twice this season. And, and most recently, I would say fairly dominantly, that was a, a tough road trip to close out the year for the Stars. And although that was probably their best game of that road trip, they still didn't look great. Uh, but this is also a Stars team, like I said earlier, that can that can hang with a lot of the good teams in the league. And I think the, the postseason presents an opportunity for a fresh start for all the all the teams there. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the the veterans on this team especially know what's at stake. I mean, Joe Pavelski did sign a contract extension in the middle of the season to come back for one year. But with, with this team, I mean, this is likely his last chance and maybe some of these other guys last chance at, at getting a cup. And I mean, Joe Pavelski is one of those guys that even if you're not a Stars fan or a Sharks fan, he's you, you just want to see him do well. I mean, he's a, a stand up guy, a, a great you know, member of this team, a great leader of this team, and also just a, a great member of the community here in Dallas. And so. I think I think I'm going to lean into the uh, the other side of me that's probably going to get my heart broken. But I think the Stars can can pull this series out. But I think if they do it, it's going to have to be in seven games, and it's going to have to be a pretty hard fought series. But I, I think it has the potential to be one of the more underrated series of the first round. I think a lot of people are looking at Toronto Tampa Bay, which I think will be a great series, and even that that Minnesota St. Louis series I think has some potential as well. So I'll say Stars in seven, um, and. and Really, it's going to come down to if the Stars can get some secondary scoring uh, and if enough our goalies can rise to the occasion. Absolutely. And I think uh, regardless, one of us will be upset <laughs> no matter how this ends. That's that's the tragedy of all of this is, is yeah, someone right? someone's going to get their feelings hurt and some fan base is just going to be be upset. But I mean, that's that's why we love playoff hockey. I mean, on the other end, one of us is going to be really happy to be moving on and yep. uh I'm. Oh, I think the winner of this series gets the winner of Kings Oilers, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Um, so you know, it does. As if the Stars do lose, I hope Edmonton wins their series and we can get the the Battle of Alberta in round two because I think that would be an absolute treat and be a ton of fun to watch. 
Absolutely. I think that there, um, you know, if you're a real hockey fan, you're obviously rooting for that. Yeah. It, it would just be a bloodbath and it would be so much fun. Yeah. And and so many fun storylines to, to cover there. And, you know, if we get to that point, I'm sure that uh, you'll get to talk about it and we'll be we'll be watching from the <laughs> sidelines. But as of now, we're, we're hoping for the stars to, to go on a run similar to 2020. Uh, I know yeah. a lot of people didn't see the stars have that run in them and they somehow pulled it off. So we'll we'll see if they can do it again. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to to watch this series unfold. But Jess, thank you for for crossing over. And, you know, if the, if this series is all that it's cracked up to be in our eyes, we'll have to, to hop on for a few more crossovers. Absolutely. Yeah, it's always a treat getting to talk to other hosts who uh, are just as passionate and love the game and obviously are uh, just hoping for their team to win. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's the, the Stanley Cup playoffs and it's one of the best times of the year to be a sports fan. So we're just uh, we're just along for the ride. Absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me. And thank you for crossing over as well. <laughs> I appreciate it. And uh, I will definitely uh, well, I'll hope that we get to chat again during this series. Yeah, I hope so as well. Hope you guys enjoyed today's crossover episode with Jess over at Locked on Flames. This is going to be a really fun series, and I think the Stars definitely have a lot of potential to play spoiler. Uh, they just need to play up to the level of competition that we know that they're capable of. I uh, mentioned it a few times in the episode that this team can hang with some of the best in the league and, and at their best can be one of the best teams in the league. We've, we've seen that from the Stars team this season. It's all about how they handle their business and go about their business here in the postseason. And it all starts on Tuesday night. Uh, they got to come out strong in game one and try to steal at least one of these first two games in Calgary. I think that will be huge for them going forward. Uh, and it's going to be a pretty daunting task to overcome a 0-2 deficit coming back to Dallas. But I think the Stars are up for the challenge, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. But thank you again for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars, for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we will be talking a little bit more about this first game. Today we took an overall look at this matchup, this whole series, and tomorrow we will dive into the specifics of game one and all the implications there. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis and our show at Locked on Stars. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform as well. But I hope you have a great day, Stars fans. We will see you back here tomorrow. Get some rest and get ready for game one of the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs.